Have you ever wondered how Spotify just knows you? Spotify makes the bulk of its money. Spotify acquired Spotify have just released. You're brushing your teeth and you shuffle through a random playlist and it seems like every song slaps. It's almost like an addiction. Turns out there's more science involved than you think. After going through psychology research papers, interviews with tech workers at Spotify, and even their coding documents, I'll let you know that you're not the only one that feels like Spotify is reading your mind. I'll explain why that is and how we as users can make the most out of the world's favorite music app. I'm a UX designer with a degree in cognitive science and let's dive deep into Spotify's design psychology. So what is special about Spotify's AI? The main reason why Spotify just knows you lies in its use of artificial intelligence. Okay, I know, I know, probably tired of hearing about AI at this point, but hear me out. This one's a little different. Before ChatGPT, Gemini, Copilot, and the huge AI boom, Spotify has been on top of the algorithm game since day one. But how does it work? Collaborative filtering looks at the pattern across all of this data. This is the VP of personalization at Spotify, which means he really understands the algorithm. He explains this concept called collaborative filtering, which looks at patterns such as when two songs are placed right next to each other on any given playlist and how often that occurs. Through this, Spotify builds a map of songs where each point represents a song and the location of these points relative to one another is determined by collaborative filtering. More often two songs appear next to one another on a playlist, the closer these two songs will be on the map. This creates a seamless user experience. Let's say you open Spotify in the morning as you eat your breakfast. You put your headphones on and head to school, the grocery market, or wherever your morning errands take you. By the time you open Spotify, hours may have passed by. You just listen to your favorite tunes without doing a single thing. And that is precisely what Spotify aims to do. It's part of the intended user experience. So knowing this, to make the most out of Spotify, play around with Spotify radios, the daily mix, Discover Weekly, or even the newer DJ feature. I mean, all of these features are powered by their algorithm, so might as well use them to discover your new favorite songs. So let's say you're a software engineer at Spotify. What kind of code are you working with to keep your users engaged? For every song on Spotify, an auditory analysis is performed and a rating is given to several variables. One of those variables is danceability. Coded as a number from 0 to 1, danceability describes how suitable a track is for dancing based on a combination of musical elements including tempo, rhythm stability, beat strength, and overall regularity. So why the heck do they want to track danceability? Well, Spotify wants to be as user-centric as possible. Apart from tracking things like beats per second, volume, they track danceability because Dancing is an integral part of human nature. I mean, also, after listening to upbeat music, don't you just feel good? A research study done on nearly 300 Spotify users showed that these data points like danceability, valence, and energy track how well a song can help us regulate our moods. Like right here. Regulation of mood and arousal might be interpreted as the main function of dance music. In other words, when we find songs we enjoy, we become happier. This dopamine kick is exactly what keeps us on Spotify. So how does Spotify learn about our behaviors? Well, to answer this question, why don't we directly ask the Spotify design team? They actually wrote a whole article describing how they researched for Spotify. So they adopt this audio forward approach and their goal is to craft a user experience that spans contexts, situations, and different environments. This is where it gets really interesting. Traditionally, when you're conducting an experiment, you might bring in participants into a lab setting, set everything up, and the whole vibe is just very formal. Let's say a researcher comes into this lab 
They hover over the participants shoulders and kind of just stare at them This hovering, observing action might influence the participants in very unnatural ways which can compromise the results of the research Spotify researchers understood this effect and so they wanted to create the most natural testing setting as possible With that, they had participants wear eye-tracking glasses The participants kind of just went into the world, performed their daily tasks and at the same time Spotify researchers can get data points to see exactly how and when they interact with the app. So this user research method is extremely smart because it's non-intrusive and it really emulates using the app in real life. Huh, no wonder Spotify can predict our behavior. You know that time of the year when you go onto Instagram, mindlessly scroll through stories as we all do, and think that you're getting hacked because every single story looks exactly the same. Yeah, Spotify wrapped, once in a year, takes over all of our lives. The perfect time to slide into DMs, you know how it is. Or just connect with that random high school friends that you haven't spoken to in years, only because you both share the same music taste. So besides this social game, there's actually a very scientific reason why Spotify rap is such a big thing. Turns out, as soon as you share information, you get this huge dopamine rush. In fact, a PubMed article found that disclosing information about the self is intrinsically rewarding. Revealing information about yourself not only activated the dopamine system, but people are even willing to forego money. They're willing to pay to disclose information about themselves. That's crazy! Why are humans so self-obsessed? Regardless, we go on to Instagram, we share our Spotify wrapped, and because we're sharing information, we become happy, and then we go back to Spotify to give them more data to learn about us. And this cycle never ends. That's a lot of data. Should I be worried? I mean, I don't think so. Spotify is just using your data to create a more tailored music listening experience for you. Yes, it's kind of scary how accurate it sometimes is, but there is no harm in that. Do you have a story where Spotify seems to just read your mind? Do share it in the comments below. If you want to join me on this quest to explore the design psychology of tech products that we use today, subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you.